Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Please be sure to stick around towards the end of this video as I have some new VW goodness to give away. Stick around, maybe you will be one of the lucky winners. Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video, we are going to do something pretty cool on this podcast, the Valone Works podcast, and I'm with my very good friend and super pal, Ramsey Faragala. Ramsey owns a 1960 Carmen Ghia convertible in the paprika red. And, you know, guys, I'm the bug guy. So we're going to do a Beetle versus Gia podcast here. And compare and contrast the two cars when it comes to when you bought them in the beginning, back in the day, to restoring them now. And we're going to break them down as best we can here for you guys and give you this information of where even the market's going with these cars. So uh, I am proud to introduce Ramsey Faragala. What's going on, brother? Nothing, just hang. <laughs> uh i met ramsey a few years ago uh he showed up to one of my open houses uh i don't know how long yeah. ago Rams, maybe like five six years ago i think it was back in the 60s <laughs> okay well i was not even considered at that point you know i was still in the uh thought <laughs> process with my parents but um yeah um it's geez it's it's been a while but he's been an awesome friend of mine and we still converse even the months this pandemic he's helped us out a great deal here at my shop and uh always loved having rams around and uh always made us laugh and we always had our cappuccino had our our wine fridays and uh it was always good right so yeah man um but uh let me show the folks what ramsey's got this is his 60 carmen Ghia in the paprika red there's the man right there and yeah just just a beauty so we're going to compare and contrast bug and uh gia guys and i really hope that you know i got some stuff lined up here to show you what you can do to certain cars oh. over the others you know so uh i think pretty pretty cool we got a you know, good show here for everybody. So before we get going, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And you know, you guys know I bring VW action like this to you guys each and every week. So please consider subscribing if you are new. So, but, um, all right, so let's get to it. Um, the throwdown, the throwdown. And I guess we'll start off with the, let's start off with the beetle and everyone knows the people's car. It, sold how many i don't know 20 over 20 million of them worldwide international wow. car uh you know scary background of course it started with the nazis and uh but made its shape primarily i think in the 60s during the hippie era and uh it was peace love kind of vehicle and a happy car so that was always good um and even before that even before that, you know, it was such an inexpensive and totally reliable car that you could, I mean, it, it's hard to kill those cars. Totally. That's one of the reasons the popularity really took off, too. Yeah. And I think, too, you know, in the 50s, right, like post-war, they were maybe shunned a little bit, like, ah, oh, it's a German car. We just, right, we, right. just we just fought these guys, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, and five years ago when it came here in 49 or um, but yeah, they were inexpensive. Everyone was used to the big American cars then, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, so these things were, were tiny compared to the big American cars, but, uh, yeah, super inexpensive and just again, designed to be worked on at home with your home tools. Yeah. That was the cool thing about the beetle. So that little bag of tools that it came with, you could do 90% of what you needed to do unless something right. was seriously broken. So there are two pros right there, right? So it was made for the home guy, um, inexpensive compared to the, the average car. Um, great on gas mileage, although gas wasn't that expensive back then. And uh, <laughs> But going 30-something miles per gallon, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool, you know, back then. But what was your average car doing back then? I have no idea. American V8 certainly wasn't 30. No. No, we're, we're talking maybe single digits or, you know, low, low teens, if, mm -hmm. if that. So, um, yeah, so the, the, the Beetle has had its definite pros there. The one con that it had from the get-go, which everybody thought, was that it was ugly. 
So um, I even thought they were ugly when I was a, a kid. And I remember seeing them in the 80s on the road and they were always tan or the light blue. And every time I was in the back seat with my dad, I'm like, dad, that car is so ugly, <laughs> you know, compared to the 80s cars that we thought were a little more streamlined, you know. Um, so, you know, but over time, it's just it's just gotten to be such a character to most people, I think. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 it's you know everybody recognizes them. It doesn't matter what country you're in, or yeah, even what generation you're from. I mean, my kids when they were when they were tykes, they would every time you saw a bug, it was like punch bug, and then they yeah, oh yeah, yeah, slam me in the arm, and it was yep. always funny. And they, I mean, they're like they look like a toy car. No, totally. Yeah, and That's nice. That's a nice color combo. Yeah, that's you remember that was my uh, 70 convertible that I did yeah. and uh, I painted it in that copper color and uh, which was that was uh, a BMW color, right? Yeah, yeah. A, sp- a, a, a mini BMW color called spicy orange metallic. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a beauty. That was a... That. Yep. And that's what's nice even about the, the, the pro about the beetle when it comes, say, we step into the restoration side of things. You know, people get creative with them. They're super, they're customizable, you know, and, and people mm-hmm. go to their heart's content uh, with these cars. And um, if you do the color combination right, um, I do feel that um, it doesn't really devalue it too much uh, compared to, say, a Duesenberg or, you know, you're <laughs> customizing a Corvette or something. You know, um, those cars, everyone's pretty, they're they're anal and they want things to be, you know, period correct. Um, Some of my highest sales came with a car uh, somewhat customized. Um, You know, I don't lower, I don't, I don't chop or, you know, soup up any of my cars. Um, We do sort of insist on putting the, the bigger if, if it's a 36 or an early 40, we'll put a big bore in that. And I think that's right. really a safety issue. Uh, yeah. Anything. And I agree. And as, yeah, I don't mind making the engine more powerful as long as it still looks the part. Right. Uh, I that, agree. Yeah. That's, that's where I feel people can gain um, both again, like you said, safety and still retain value. I was going to say, if you can't keep up with traffic or if you have a problem merging, you really have to be, quite alert when you're driving these cars no for sure and that's i guess that's one of the cons where yeah they're slower than the average vehicle today they're going to take a little bit longer than to get up to speed if you're doing backyard runs um or you know back back road runs then you're okay at least you're driving um but some of us like say in new york new jersey uh, california i mean you had you got highways yeah um and it's it's something to keep in mind for sure you know, um, the good thing about the Beetle, like we said, from the past, even today, they're still they're still pretty affordable to get. Yeah. Uh, you know, prices have gone up. Haggerty did mention last year in 2020 that the Beetle did increase between 15 and 20 percent last year. Oh, that much. That's great. Insane. You know, amongst, you know, uh, amidst the COVID. So right. uh, pretty remarkable that, you know, uh, people are still looking to dip into their pockets and, and you know, and get a, a nostalgic vehicle to bring back their history. And, and being home, using your hands, the other cool p- pro with it is that they're easy to maintain, right? I mean, you know, yeah. for the most part, I mean, they are still pretty easy to tinker with. Um, and I always tell people, don't be afraid to work on your V-dub. Um, just get your hands dirty and you'll see that it's number one, super enjoyable. And if you are stuck in a situation where you can't fix something, what do we have at our disposal is YouTube. And we have the how to's, uh, to help you, you know, get you on your way and what you need, uh, as opposed to any I, time in history, you know? So, uh, um, I certainly used your how to's before I even met you. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I've never done any of that stuff before. And, and being at home, you know, being able to work on the cars. Yeah. I'm sharing, I'm sharing it with my kids. Oh, that's awesome. And see, that's the other yeah. great thing that we need today, too, is I think to get um, get the young ones involved and get 
you know, um, get them a little physical with working on things. Um, or, or at least uh, I, what I think is super interesting, or at least I know it's enjoyable for, for my kids is that, um, or at least my son is the problem solving. When you start talking about what's the issue and then how you go about finding out what the problem is and then you have to troubleshoot, it's really, it's engaging. Yeah. It's not just using your hands. You really have to use your, your noggin and it helps you expand your knowledge of the car for sure no i i totally agree and it's if there's a way to to also get them off of the screens and into something historical i think you gain appreciation there don't you think yeah and it's empowering for them to be like you know the car's running crappy what do you think the issue is I think that works for both Kia and Beetle. You know, the fact oh, that yeah. we have this at our fingertips today, you know, think about it before the internet. Uh, <laughs> if, you were, if you were in a jam, what are you doing? You know, right. so um, I think here, like what I have on my pros list here for both cars, I would say they're affordable. They're easy to maintain. They're reliable because you can drive them. And once you get them up to speed, they are reliable. Um, they got good gas mileage, especially the Gia, because it's got a more streamlined body to it. Um, they're super fun. And they are comfortable. You know, for their time period, they are pretty comfortable. Uh, you know, I would have to say I've driven a 356 Porsche before. And yep. to be honest, I thought my Beetle or your Carmen Gia was more comfortable to drive than the 356 Porsche. <laughs> Um, I concur. You know, I really do. Yeah, I really, I really, and I know, you know, they're way more valuable than, than our little Volkswagens, but, um, you know, th th there's a nice little package with our cars, uh, with the Beetle and the, and the Ghia. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I think we have some good, good points there. As far as the cons go, like, like the one we said, they're, they're slower than the average car today. Um, I mean, they're certainly faster than a Model T, <laughs> but, um, you know, to the, to the average driver today hitting the highways there, they're slow. So something to, to, to keep in mind there. I was going to say they're also dangerous. I okay. Mean, let's not forget that. No airbags. Right. I didn't even have seat belts in it when I got there. Exactly. Yep. Not, most of them are not three point harnesses. Right. And if you're going to like, and the earlier cars, they don't even have a clutch collapsible steering column right so, right um yeah you know, there's no airbags like you know there's no anti if you, brakes, uh, you know yeah. <laughs> yeah they don't have the crumple zones either like you know to cars no. today to take an impact um yeah they they definitely for sure up to the safety standards of today there it's not there this is something with any classic car owner has to understand that yeah sure you know uh, i don't care what year you're dealing with you know i mean 70s and prior you know this is just what the case is so do i say you drive at your own risk yeah probably there's a good con there that you brought up um and yeah like i said the rust is another issue with both cars I yeah. would say maybe the Gia is more concerning than the Beetle uh, because of the unibody sort of conf uh, make on the Gia. Mm -hmm. uh, the Carmen Gia, like you have this long body here. Maybe you could change a door. Yep. Um, but, you know, for the most part, like you said, you, you, your rear fender, your front fender, that's all part of the nose. That's all part of the whole you know, rear end of the car, a bug. Yeah. You could just buy a fender and uh, take that off. And, you know, it's a little bit easier for the body guy to deal with. So I, I've never worked myself on a Gia. Um, I know Vince, our good friend, Vince, who's got a 65 Carmen Gia since the day it was born. Um, he bought it brand new in 65. Um, and he did a full restoration on his, I think a good, 15 years ago now, I think, maybe more. Um, and, you know, like it, he just drove it off. The... I know it, it yeah. still looks great. Um, and, you know, like I remember him telling me back in the day that the gears were so notorious with a front nose. Oh, yeah. Gets tapped. 
Um, and the beetle too. I mean, the beetle has that front tub there. And once you squon you, you squish that front tub just to shape that whole section. Um, now for beetle, I don't know for gear, maybe you can enlighten me. The beetle now they're making year specific uh, panels. Now, even for early beetle that I can get out of Finland or mm. Sweden, uh, wolf parts and restoration panels.com. They're making great panels now for the beetle. Classic fab has the green uh, pans. Um, those are really good. Those yet. For early beetle, those are good. I thought we got some from Wolfsburg West. We, they have good pans. We just did pans on a 57 here. And mm -hmm. that, that turned out really nice. Now in the Gia world with your parts, the, who are the main part suppliers for Carmen Gia? They're pretty much the same. You can go to Airhead Parts. Okay. Sip one. And yep. as you know, a lot of a lot of the parts are the same. And, and then do the they stuff. give also um like Beetle stuff, they give a lot of um three versions of a product, you know, from yeah. crap to medium quality to good quality. Um, is it the same in the gear world? Um, for the most part. Yeah, the, the parts are generally very easy to get a hold of. Uh, unless you have super unique parts, like my front turn signals are super expensive. Oh yeah, the early door handles, which had were made um, from really crappy metal, their chrome always goes. Mm -hmm. so to find them is difficult, and then to find them in good shape, it's like it's crazy. You can yeah, you know, a, a new set of door handles that have been rechromed are basically as much as I paid for my car. So um, that, that was one of the things I mentioned too uh, to myself yeah. before we came on here was that, you know, Carmen Ghia parts are more money for a restoration than say against a Beetle. Um, the early ones, certainly, yes. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, if I was to shop and buy a, a bumper for a Beetle, say an early bumper, um, you know, with the towel bars and such, Right. You know, Wolfsburg West, I think they're pretty much over three hundred dollars now each. Yeah. Um, if correct me if I'm wrong, Carmen Ghia bumper is somewhere around a thousand bucks. Yeah, or upwards. Yeah. For one bumper. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, that's that's the one. But those are, those are the early ones. Now, if you get the Ghias that are in the the, the sixty nine to seventy four or whatever. Yep. Most of that stuff is less expensive, and I think pretty much everything is easy to find. Okay, okay. So those also have the bigger motors, too. Right, exactly. Everybody loves. Yeah. So, you know, that's when it comes to a rest restoration standpoint, the gear will um, most likely cost you more to restore than a Beetle, uh, simply because, number one, body work. Mm -hmm. I would say for, you know, a, a, you know, a negative that the gear has is, is rust and body work. How are the panels that are offered for gear today? Are they a good match or is there a lot of fabrication that's needed? I don't know of panels. What people usually do is they get a donor car and they'll cut those panels. I see. And then they'll, from an old car and then weld them into a new car. Got it. Okay. Um, but it's super tricky. Um, and a lot of stuff is, you know, each one of these cars, this is the other thing you can like, say, say you want to cut the nose, you, you, your nose, you got a car for a great deal, but the nose was all busted up. Right. So you're going to buy that same year car. You're going to cut the nose off of that car and weld it onto your, your, um, the one you want to keep. But each one of these gears, especially the early ones were, they're made by hand. They're welded yeah. there, all of that stuff. Yeah. So fitting a different car's nose or side panel um it's you really have to know what you're doing because it's not going to be the same thing it's not going to be like a stamped fem fender right right you can sort of tweak and bend and compress in order to make it fit um it's really difficult uh see and we, we do see that even with beetle there's certain panels that are out there that they're not year specific so mm -hmm. you know you can I, I can drop, like I just dropped off front uh, panels, front uh, uh, lower uh, panels by the front nose on the Beetle. 
it's on the sides, like on the sides of the spare tire tub. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it has the bumper bracket mounts on the inside. And you can tell that these panels are not year specific. You know, they'll, they are going to work for, um, you know, who knows, early 60s, all the way up to say 67. And there's shaping that's involved that they, the body guys have to do. Then it's not like a puzzle piece where it just goes on. Right. There's a lot of fabrication, unfortunately, with some of the panel uh, that are that are offered today. Mm -hmm. So the con too with and the, and the negative side to restoring, you know, both Volkswagens, the Gia or the Beetle, and even go probably going into bus and whatever else, um, the quality of the parts. Yeah. So I'm noticing that the prices of everything is going up with parts. I mean, in the last two years, I cannot believe the the parts, how how much they've gone up. And yet the quality is not getting better. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you get a third party guy that's maybe doing some sort of 3D printing or they're doing their own stampings like, like Wolf Parts or uh, AutoCraft and uh, restoration panels where the paneling is like near perfect and specific to years. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a shame to see, you know, a lot of the, you know, traditional stuff that's for sale today, you know, kind of like JC Whitney, you know, back in the day, which was <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where it's going um, as far as the, you know, as the years I see going up and when I'm in this resto business, what, what bothers me too is with safety parts. Yeah, you know, from wheel cylinders, master cylinders, brake shoes, um, the lines even, they're just, they're failing. And they're failing within a year, some of them. And I can get the best part, say, quote unquote, NOS or OEM, German. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's like, it's going through taiwan and then heading to germany and getting the german sticker on it and then sending it to us and that's scaring me you know because now we're talking about safety mm -hmm. and last thing you want is for someone to lose their brakes or lose um a steering couple like we had a card where the steering the round steering disc above the steering De box the delaminated coupler, the coupler yeah shattered no kidding just shattered cracked in a, in a million little pieces brand new i drove that 66 that we did for uh, a great guy called bill at a pa um and he put disc brakes in the front mm -hmm. and um you know it was so nice to drive <laughs> um, it, it just it took, it took us a, uh, an afternoon to put him in yeah it was like just yep. like three or four hours and they're not failing. I don't hear about the fails in those compared to, you know, going with the traditional aftermarket part. So, right. um, yeah. And if you want to go faster with your Volkswagens, a Gia or a Beetle, um, I would recommend at least, you know, if you've got a, a, you know, a heavy duty engine in there and you want some power, the drums are probably not going to be good enough. No, certainly so, not. Yeah, so I would definitely look at a, a disc brake conversion for the front, dual master cylinder, like you said, you know, mm -hmm. which was original from 67 onward. The the negative side to parts, yeah, like I mentioned, you got to fish through sometimes to get, at, get away from the crap. There's a lot of crap out there, but there are some good quality parts out there that people are making um, mm -hmm. and replacements that you can find instead of going the traditional route. I think there's... can I say one other pro for Absolutely. both of these cars? Yeah, which is they're pretty unique, even though there were you know 200 billion zillion bugs <laughs> made. Yep, when you drive one down the street, they don't look like anything else on the road. No, they don't. Yep, like this beetle right here. This was my 54 ragtop that I did a, a few years ago and sold it to a fellow, a nice fellow in Arizona. And Strato Silver, which striking color. Um, Such a nice color. You, yeah, and it's got the semaphores, that, the directionals that fly out the sides. It's so rare to see. Even old Volkswagen people come up to me. Like, if I go to the gas station and I got someone guy that comes up to me, he's like, oh, what year is that? Is that a, 
is that a 67 or a 62 or and i'm like oh and it's 54 54 wow and then he goes into the questions well when did they make them when did they come here i don't remember most people even in the <laughs> 60s and 70s don't remember seeing the 50s bugs on the road yeah. it was primarily 60s and, and later and uh so yeah if you want attention and you want to make friends <laughs> you want to get into a really good community that you can converse with and socialize with and a, a great hobby beetle or gear or you know these volkswagens are great to jump into and it's it's so nice to be able to drive on the road with these and be so rare to look at and strike up conversations and sometimes you meet the, the most interesting people so it's true that's a plus there you know when, when there's so much negativity going on in the world today I tell, I tell my wife i'm like you know thank god i got the volkswagens and i go to a shop where i'm playing with toys and tinkering they're great escapes you know they're they're mm -hmm. great ways to just forget about what's going on and just be a kid again and, and and work on your dub so that's a plus too and meeting new people is always a plus i mean you you, you might be meeting people in a community that you didn't even realize was right around you as far as gia versus beetle um we touched on they, they pretty much have the same pros um, the cons, I would say, is the gear is more expensive to restore than the Beetle. Um, parts are more readily available for a Beetle. The gears, they're there, but just remember they're going to be a little tougher to find and more expensive to buy. The, con, the, the pros for both of them is that there's a great VW community online. And, you know, I can post something on Facebook. Guys, you got to use Facebook these days because we're, as far as this group, of the Volkswagen community groups are concerned. There's so many groups on Facebook. I can post a question and in minutes sometimes, or even within a half an hour, I'm getting a response. People reach out to help for both yeah. cars. So that's that's a great pro right there, a great plus for the both of them. And the Samba is just been a, the, the like Samba is huge. It's been yeah. there for years and it's it's a great resource to go to as well. Yeah, for both of them. Um, people will really like if you have a an issue that's like a you know a, a one year issue or even a six month like like your car is specific to this right there is somebody there who knows <laughs> yeah yeah exactly what you're talking about and those that's people right. they've been so kind to me when I, I didn't know anything um, yep it was really and there's so much stuff that's that's there that you can just read on your own right right. For sure. The Gia versus Beetle. Back in the day, the Gia had the sporty look. I think the Gia looks really damn cool. I think it's a beautiful looking car. And everybody knows that was actually Italian designed, um, not German designed. It was then, you know, the design of the body was built by an Italian, right? Um, and then the building of the actual car was in a Volkswagen factory. The the chassis and everything else, mechanicals are pretty much the same as a Beetle. Um, and I think that what they, they advertise it as the sporty look, right? Not necessarily sporty uh, speed. There's a one wonderful advertisement of like a Gia, and I think it was maybe a Mustang from the time period. Yeah. And it said, you lose. <laughs> right, right. Or what's the other Gia commercial where the Gia is going straight into like a sheet or like a tarp or something and it's supposed to break through the pa the the wall of paper or whatever it was and it it's it gets caught it doesn't break That's through funny. so yeah the, the, you know volkswagen had some very comical uh ads um so yeah but the great thing about a gia where i was i get guys that come up to me and say you know oh my god i would love a 356 porsche I would love um, something with some speed. And oh, I can't afford a Porsche, of course. So I'm like, then get a Gia. So to me, I, I actually like the comfort of a Gia over a 356. That's just me. Um, but I, I think, concur. yeah. And now look at this engine compartment. This is Ramsey's car. The yes, SS36 horsepower engine in there. But look at the space you have in there to put a more powerful motor. 
you want to put a Porsche engine into one of these cars, it's going to be a lot easier to put it into a Ghia than it would be, say, putting it into a Beetle. So you can get Porsche styling, Porsche feel with a Carmen Ghia. And I would pick that than doing that to a Beetle. Just because you got the low center of gravity, you know, you're sitting lower in the car. Again, it's a sportier looking car, sportier feel. And you can almost touch 356 stuff with the Ghia. Um, there's a video I have. You've got room for dual carbs there that you can actually get to. Yes. Yeah. This is a car, this right? This guy. This guy, they put a 911 motor in this thing. But they also completely re-engineered the, the body of this they, car yes it would have fallen apart <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at that look at that right there yeah and i think it was a 311 horsepower or something <laughs> if i'm not mistaken i mean this is quite magical engineering that these guys did for sure uh and then here's here's the gear assembly oh wow Look how cool that is. But look, same platform as a Beetle. I mean, a little bit fatter uh, pan. I think it's four inches wider or something like that. Yep. But I saw a Beetle on the line there too. So it looks like they assembled at least the coops with the the Beetle. There's a Beetle right there. Yeah. Yep. So I thought that they were in their own separate factories, but apparently not. Uh, I know the car convertibles were separate factories. I wasn't mistaken, you know. I know Beetle was in Carmen, the Carmen factory, but there is a convertible gear right there. But look at that thing! What a beauty! And that's I mean, that's so nice. and that's what's nice is they you can still make the car look like a sleeper and pull right mm -hmm. up to a Porsche and say, "Hey, let's do it." They'll laugh at you, but then you know you got this little beast that that looks like it's just going to be a little 60 horsepower look at that thing oh my gosh see but look at the room look at the room you have to put that in there that would be trouble for a beetle that's a lot of trouble but you got you still got elbow room on the side there even with all the re-engineering yeah yeah and and it's not like you got to go with a 911 engine you know you could do a dual carb you know sure uh, engine in there and uh you know, the Gia just has the, the, the aerodynamics. It's got the, the streamlined body, you know, a pro over the Beetle when it comes to, say, if you want some speed and customization and some streamlining, you know, I mean, uh, there's a little more comfort, I would think, in my opinion, um, to that. So, well, I can't really fit in the Beetle. It's always sort of a struggle to sit in the, in the driver's seat. <laughs> yep. Um, so it is a more comfortable car for me. Well, my gripe with the Gia, when it comes to comfort is for me, it feels like I'm sitting on a slant. So you have that front firewall that just curves right in mm -hmm. uh, as far, you know, and so I feel like I have to move to my left and shift my legs to the right to get to the pedals. The Beetle mm -hmm. is a little more straight legged, um, but yeah, for someone who's taller, the beetle i get i get emails all the time the guys are over you know six two six four and they're trying to yeah. get into a beetle and they're trying to figure out what, how they can fit in and you know any remedy for that guys i would say is you just maybe gotta maybe gotta take the seat rails off and move them back uh a bit so you have some more room but um but then your arms are really far away from the steering wheel yes yes that's for sure too so, but definitely a, a pro, uh, I think the, the, the Gia has over the Beetle is when it comes to engine customization and being, you know, closer to 356 stuff, um, you know, it, it's, it's really cool that you can uh, do that to that car. Even with your car here, that engine compartment. Oh, what a great shot, Rams. Look at that. <laughs> there he is. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so Roland took that shot during the uh, during the um, the fall cruise, right? Yeah. yeah. So if anybody doesn't know, I, I do an annual fall foliage cruise here in the Hudson Valley, and uh, we get all all air cooled Volkswagens, even Porsches that come and are involved in this cruise. So uh, every year I do, and I get people from all over the country that come in and drive, and it's just a pleasure to see all these cars on the road. It's so colorful and uh, just gives you a smile, just like what's on Ramsey's face, man. Uh, this is what it's all about. 
So I think even with all the setbacks that these cars have, the reward is driving them and getting a face like that after it's all done. Um, you know, my dad and I, we can bitch and swear and throw things at certain projects. <laughs> uh, certain bugs uh, fight you tooth and nail before they get completed. But when the car is finally done and you're working on it and it, you, could, you finally have a finished product and it's running and driving, uh, all those problems that you had with the car just go away. And if anything, it adds to the flavor to your storytelling when it comes to being next to somebody who wants to come up and, and talk to you. So, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, in the end, the reward is great. And that's the, again, another pro for both cars. You know, they're great hobby cars. You restore them. For the most part, they're pretty inexpensive. I think the values of the cars are going up. So some of the, the smaller guy that's looking to dip into the hobby, you can still find inexpensive cars. If you get yourself into the, the late 60s, into the 70s, you, you can still pick up a project pretty inexpensive. But understand that the parts are going up in price. Well, the resources are there. So if, if you're patient it's enough hard, yeah. to sit and do homework, yeah, um, it, it's all a out. A lot there. of homework. A lot of homework. Yeah, this, this is not something that's going to be done overnight or in a week. Um, there's time involved, and people have to be vested into that and, and understand that. I know we we live in an Amazon yeah. world today, or you know, instant push notifications, and you know, people want things done quickly. And I can see where frustration can get in sometimes. And then people throw their arms up in the air and say, oh, I just got, I want to sell the car as a whatever, right. is, you know? Um, so this is, this is a labor of love. And if you're going to do most of the work yourself, understand. And if you've never really touched on it before, um, understand it, it could take some time. And I always tell people to take a bunch of pictures while you're stripping the oh. car. So, you know, when it comes time to put it back together. Tag it and bag it like you're not going to come back to it for 10 years. <laughs> even if you yep. do come back to it in three months. Right. You still are like, hold it. Does this thing go this way or does it go that way? Right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, that was the best piece of advice I've ever heard. And I tell that to a lot of my viewers when they're doing this kind of thing. Um, you know, we can all do this. We can put these cars together. Um, and that's a pro. Um, but the, the negative might be, yeah, it's, it could take some time. If you found a car that's a real rust bucket, you know, body and paint work might get expensive depending where you are located. Uh, New York, California rates are pretty high these days. Um, you might, if you live down South or Midwest, you might be able to find a body shop that can help you. But uh, paint and mat you know materials cost to do paint and body work has gone up everywhere, not yeah. just in the small, you know, not just in the other states. Um, so that's everywhere. Um, labor costs are different in different states. So I just I generally tell people, you know, like I, I used to be able to get a, a bug done like a kind of a backyard restoration, a driver quality restoration, you know, under ten grand. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't think that's if unless you're really good. And you, you, you're sitting on a boatload of parts and you pick the car up for, for dirt money. Um, maybe you can still do it. But I, I think that's very difficult these days because on average, our cars that we restore for people, parts list alone is between fifteen and $20,000. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you, and you're talking a lot of parts. And then there's paint. Paint's and the then, other big thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's tough nowadays for our shop to get anything done under 10 grand when it comes to yeah. paint and body. Um, if you want a really good paint job, uh, if you want a, you know, a, a Mako thing, you don't care, you know, it looks like somebody painted it with a brush, then yeah, you could probably spend 2,500 or three grand and, and, and be okay with it. But, um, you know, you want something that's really presentable, that's going to, you know, the value is going to go up for it. You got to, you got to go a little more. So, um you know, so it's the backyard stuff that people used to do. Yeah, you could still do it. Um, but, you know, be prepared to spend some money nowadays uh, to to put these cars together. And even finding a good project these days, it's kind of pricing people out. Like, good luck finding a split window project under 10000 <laughs> anymore. You know, they are not it's not there anymore. I mean, you know, they're all in the mid teens to 20,000 or more to find a split project oval rag top, same thing. It's they're expensive. Uh, but you know, you want a mid sixties to a seventies car. You want to pick it up for 2,500 bucks or something as a project. Those are still out there. Um, 
Carmen Ghia, or like you said, early Ghia's, same thing. Later Ghia's, you could probably get something pretty inexpensive. Yeah, uh, so that already runs. Right, and right. Just, I mean, get the best thing that you can for your money. Um, yeah. And then if it's if it already runs, then that's great. Then you can take your time and just improve on things. You can improve the electrical. You can improve yes. the motor. You can, you know, you can tune up the front end and mm -hmm. all that stuff. You can redo the interior. Right. You could do it. Anybody yeah. can do it. You job it out, it's going to get pricey. Anything that's before the early 70s is super simple. Yeah. Super simple. And the other good thing I try to tell people all the time is a lot of people forget about it, and we'll probably just wrap this up here. But, um, you know, when it comes to diving into these cars and to work on them, um, the value of these cars is going up, both the Ghia and the Beetle. So there's a huge plus right there, a huge pro for both of them um sometimes they go you know the gear surpasses the beetle and sometimes the beetle surpasses the gear but for the most part they both seem to be going upwards so that's why we get a lot of people that come here to my shop that want to invest in these cars because you, the money's appreciating better there than say in the market or yep. you know putting it in a bank or something 20%, so percent you said yeah, Haggerty said last year anywhere between 15 and 20 percent the Beetle increased in value, and uh, I I would I would say that the Gia is probably right in there. Um, the more every time I'm browsing prices for Gia, uh, it's amazing what some of the prices are for them. So especially convertibles, I mean everybody mm. loves, you know a Gia convertible right. is where the money is where it's at. So yeah. yeah, guys, I mean if you can find now a negative two finding them is the good ones that most people want are either snatched up or they're already rotted you know so it's tough to find a complete car today for a good price mm -hmm. um you know uh you used to be able to find a complete beetle like i said a project for a thousand bucks you know 500 bucks 2500 dollars. but all these complete projects now that are numbers matching got the seat frames in them you know all that kind of stuff is all going up uh, so be wary of that. And uh, if you're only in a budget of, say, you know, under five grand to buy a project, you got to understand that, you know, the, the car is going to be missing stuff or it's going to need some major work. So, um, again, a pro and con for, for the two of them. You so, can also uh, then get a less expensive car, yep. work on it, learn, yep. and then trade up. They, that's what that's exactly. Do it. And that's how I started. Uh, I mean, my first Beetle was 350 bucks. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was a 68 to sitting in a guy's, uh, you know, parking lot, rotten to the ground. And, you know, I threw some money at it, sold it, grabbed that money, found another project. And you just you just keep going and you live and learn. And, yep. you know, and so uh, but uh, listen, I, I think this has been great. This has been uh, we've been talking for a good amount of time now. There's a lot, we, we threw a lot of information out there. I'm sure we missed a ton of information that sure. we wanted to hear. And if anybody wants to add to the conversation, leave it in the comments section below. And uh, we'd love to hear you guys thoughts and see if you guys like this topic. Um, you know, there's there's more more topics and more, uh, you know, shows we could do just like this. So um, I think the Beetle and the gear are two great cars that you know, people are looking to get into a hobby or looking to restore, it is still manageable. Uh, you can still afford to pick something up, but, you know, just be wary that they are going up in value. And then as the years goes on, they've been creeping up. So, um, but Rams, this has been great. I, I love that you Thank came you, on Chris. here. I'm glad you could take the time out to come on. And um, I do hope to see you again and um, come back to the fan, man. It'd always be good to get a cappuccino with you. we get some lunch. <laughs> <and>, uh, <laughs> so love it. yeah, it'd be awesome, man. But, um, thank you guys again. And, uh, I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed that content. Now on to the giveaways. I have my four piece floor pan carpet set for beetle. I also have an engine insulation tarboard set for beetle or Gia, and I have some t-shirt merchandise. And what do you got to do to be one of the chosen ones? And you get to choose any one of those gifts. What you got to do is head over to Valone's RC Hobby. Guys, it's my second YouTube channel, and I do some tinkering on there. I do some reviews of RC cars, and I wrench on these little things. And uh, I am coming up on my year anniversary, January 19th, 2021. And it would be awesome if you guys could head over there, smash that subscribe button. And in the last two videos that I posted, in the comments section below either one of those videos, hashtag Valone's RC Hobby. 
let's cross the 5,000 subscriber mark by my anniversary. That would be super cool. If not, that's okay too. Uh, I just would be super grateful and super appreciative if you guys can go over there and do that for me. Help a VW brother out. And uh, I think it's kind of relatable. I mean, we like to tinker on things. Why not tinker on little ones as well? So uh, I will be announcing the winners in the next week or two. So be on the lookout for that. And um, I would be super grateful, guys. Thank you so much for, for joining me and sticking around towards the end of this video. And uh, I'll see you around the campus. Be on the lookout, winners. Uh -huh.